Tupac is praised. Biggie is praised. Floyd Mayweather is praised. Kim Kardashian is praised. Stormzy is praised. But where is the praise gone for the king of the world? He is the merciful. He is the compassionate. He is the absolute power. He is the victorious. He is the compeller. He is the greatest. He is the creator. He is the maker. He is the shaper. He is the opener. He is the giver. He is the sustainer. This is the almighty Allah. This is the almighty Allah. This is the almighty Allah. O oh, Muslims, many men and women have come and gone. Some that are alive at this moment of time, while others have left the world and they are six foot underground getting questioned by the angels of the grave. Some, they were praised for their devices. Some, they were praised for their innovations. Some, they were praised for their discoveries. Some were praised for the music. Some were praised for their fashion. And others were praised for what they achieved in life. Some will be remembered and others will be forgotten. And from amongst those individuals that are praised, from amongst them is this man, Tupac also known as Park Machiavelli, a rapper, artist, poet, known for his hip-hop and gangster rap, a man that sold over 75 million records worldwide, making him one of the greatest rappers of all time. Dropping lines, five shots could not drop me. I took it with a smile. 1996, lived by the gun, died by the gun. He was praised for his music. He was praised for his gangster rap. He was praised for his 75 million records. Where is he now? Six foot underground, getting questioned by the angels of the grave. And those who are unaware of these angels, the hadith comes to mind that their eyes flash like the flash of lightning, their voices rumble like thunder. Likewise, notorious B. 
B.I.G. Also known as Biggie Smalls. Frank White, King of New York. A rapper known for his hip hop and gangster rap, easy flowing storytelling abilities. A man that sold over 17 million records in the USA, making him famous in the history of rap. A man that dropped lines that no use going paradise with the goody goodies. Mans will party in hell. 1997 lived by the gun died by the gun. He was praised for his hip hop. He was praised for his storytelling abilities. He was praised for his debut album, Ready to Die. Where is he now? Six foot underground. Likewise, Floyd Mayweather, also known as Money, the best ever. A boxer, professional, undefeated in five divisions, holding over 13 titles. A man that brought a car worth $4.8 million, known as the supercar. For the super rich. A boxer. That is praised. For his money. Praised. For his luxuries. Praised. For his boxing. Likewise. Kim Kardashian. Also known as Kim K, Kim Kardashian West, a woman that gets paid over $25 million a year for just presenting a show, a woman that is praised by the media and individuals men and women for a TV series having over 25 million followers on Facebook 17 million followers on Twitter making her ninth in the world she is praised for her TV shows she is praised for her fashion. She is praised for what she has achieved. And it doesn't stop there. Thomas Edison was praised. Why? Because he invented the electric light bulb. James Watts was praised. Benjamin Franklin was praised. Tim Berners-Lee was praised. Why? Because he invented the HTTP protocol for the internet. But the state of the Muslims is the man gets hyped when next man says that you look like Skepta. Man gets hyped when next man says that you look like Stormzy. Man gets hyped when next man says that you look like Floyd Mayweather. Man gets hyped when next man says that you look like Justin Bieber. This is the state of some in this day and age. Why? Because man gets hyped when next man says I've seen your uncle driving a RS4 on the streets. Man gets hyped. When X-Men says that I seen your uncle driving an M4 
man gets hype when next man says that seen your uncle driving a Lamborghini. This is the state of some in this day and age. Likewise, girl gets hype when next man says that you look like Kim Kardashian. Girl gets hype when next man says that you look like Nicki Minaj. Girl gets hype when next man says that your face is contoured like Kim Kardashian's. This is a state of some in this day and age. Likewise, girl gets hype when next man says that you know what, I seen you in some shisha lounge. Girl gets hype when she buys a new Louis Vuitton bag and plasters her face with MAC makeup. Girl gets hype when next man says that are you Kim Kardashian's look-alike? This is a state of some in this day and age. Man sitting in a RS4, man gets hype. Man sitting in a shisha bar with a pipe in his mouth thinking he's some Jamaican yardy. Man gets hype. Man's walking down the road, going gym for two days. Man gets hype. Man's chilling out with the boys, cruising up and down the road, blasting the devil's music. Man gets hype. Man's walking around with his girlfriend, eating in a dessert parlor. Man gets hype. This is the state of some, but on the other hand, when you tell these people that Allah is the one who created the heavens and the earth, Mans are not hyped. When you tell them that Allah is the one who created the sun, the stars, the galaxies, mans are not hyped. When you tell them that Allah is the one who created the night and the day, mans are not hyped. When you tell them that Allah is the one who created the ocean, and in the ocean, there's a layer of salty water and sweet water and it does not mix. Mans are not hype. When you tell them that Allah is the one who created the fire of hell, they surround it by four walls. One wall is so thick, they will take a person 40 years to cover his distance, surrounded by 70,000 whips on each whip. They 70,000 angels, meaning 4 billion, 900 million angels dragging the fire of hell. Mans are not hype. When you tell them that Allah is the one who created angels, that the distance between the earlobe and the neck is 70,000 years. Mans are not hype. When you tell them that Allah is the one who gave the miracle, to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they parts the moon. He takes one side of the moon on one side of the mountain, the other side of the moon on the other side of the mountain. Mans are not hyped. When you tell them that Allah is the one who, who gave the miracle to Musa alayhi salam, they parts the ocean. Mountains of water are raised and they make the crossing. Mans are not hyped. When you tell them that Allah is the one who gave the miracle to Suleiman alayhi salam, that he became the ruler of the two worlds, that when he used to travel, a tornado used to come, lift his army up and take them to a different destination. Mans are not hype. When you tell them that Allah is the one that will roll up all the heavens in his hands, he will roll up all the worlds in his hands and he will say that I am the king of all kings. Mans are not hype. Where is the hype gone for the king of the world, master of the universe, Allah the Almighty? Where is the hype gone when you know that Allah Azza wa Jalla, the mighty is the one who created the seven heavens and the distance between the first and the second 
It's 500 years. The second and the third. It's 500 years. The third and the fourth. It's 500 years. The fourth and the fifth. It's 500 years. The fifth and the sixth. It's 500 years. The sixth and the seventh. It's 500 years. And Allah Azza wa Jalla is above all. Where is the hype gone now? Where is the hype gone now? Where is the hype gone now for the king of the world? Master of the universe. Allah Azza wa Jalla the mighty. Tupac is praised. Biggie is praised. Floyd Mayweather is praised. Skepta is praised. Kim Kardashian is praised. Stormzy is praised. Nicki Minaj is praised. But where is the praise gone for the king of the world? Allah Azza wa Jalla the mighty when you know and I know he is Allah. He is the merciful. He is the compassionate. He is the absolute power. He is the pure one. He is the victorious. He is the compeller. He is the greatest. He is the creator. He is the maker. He is the shaper. He is the opener. He is the giver. He is the sustainer. This is Allah Azza wa Jalla the mighty. And when you travel the world and you're looking for factual evidence, Allahu Akbar, Allah is the one who gave facts regarding Adam al-Islam, Nuh, Ibrahim, Ismail, Ishaq, Saleh, Lut, Yaqub, Musa, Yusha, Elias, Yunus, Ayub, Dawood, Yahya, Isa, Muhammad alayhi salam, that they call towards Tawheed, Toward the one Allah. Allah is the one who gave facts regarding Injil, regarding the Zabur, regarding the Torah, regarding the Quran. It's the final book of Allah and He abrogates every single thing that came before it. Allah is the one who gave facts regarding the Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Ali, that Allah is pleased with every single one of them. Allah is the one who gave facts regarding the day of judgment. Allah is the one who gave facts regarding the stars, the galaxies. Allah is the one who gave facts regarding the clouds that they carry tons of water. Allah is the one who gave facts regarding the moon that it has a reflected light. Allah is the one who gave facts regarding all this. This is the Almighty Allah. Why? Because when you go a step further and you realize that Allah is the one who guides and Allah is the one who misguides. Why? Because this is one of the attributes of Allah. Azza wa Jalla the mighty. And you realize that you could be in the depth of ignorance you could be on the peaks of some mountain or you could be in the middle of some jungle you could be lost you could have no iman but when the guidance comes from Allah Azza wa Jalla the mighty Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar no one will be able to stop it for that reason this story comes to mind Allahu Akbar it was at a da'wah stall in the city center of Birmingham and one non-muslim comes he says that tell me about your religion I told him about Allah. I told him about, about, about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I told him about Iman. I told him about the Quran. And all of a sudden he says to me, do you know what? Wait here one second. He walks past and then what happens? He looks in the sky. Wallahi, I swear by Allah. I swear by Allah. We were about to pack up because he was going to rain. Then all of a sudden this man comes back and he says, I want to testify. There's no God worthy of worship except Allah. I said to him, you know what? What made you accept Islam? He he says, you know, when I was speaking to you, when you told me about Allah, you told me about the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. I formed a sign in my head and I thought, oh Allah, if this man is telling the truth and if this is a man of God, then give me a sign. He says, I walked in the middle of the pathway. In my brain, I formed a sign. And that sign was, oh Allah, if you are the creator of the heavens and the earth, it's about to rain. The clouds are gray. Make the clouds disappear. Make the clouds part and let the sun come out. Wallahi, the clouds disappeared and the sun came out. He said, this is why I want to testify. There's no God worthy of worship except Allah. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the messenger of Allah. This is who guided him to Islam, who guided him from the depths of ignorance to the light of Islam. It was the king of all kings, the master of the day of judgment, the one, the only Allah Azza wa Jalla, the mighty. Why? Because he's the constrictor. He is the reliever. He is the exalter. He is the bestower of honor. 
He is the humiliator. He is the hero of all. He is the just. He is the judge. He is the subtle one. He is the all aware. He is the forbearing one. He is the magnificent one. He is the highest. He is the greatest. He is the preserver. He is the nourisher. This is Allah Azza wa Jalla, the mighty. And then let's go a step further. When you travel the world and you see how many people are in this world, you will realize that it's a mind-boggling number. And then you understand this from the time of Adam al-Islam right till this present day. How many nations have come? How many nations have gone? Allahu Akbar, mind-boggling number. And then you realize something. The Allah Azza wa Jalla gave you something so unique that He did not just give anyone else he gave you and this was your own identity he did not just give you a passport he did not just give you an id card he did not just give you a student visa he gave you something so unique allahu akbar and that was the fingerprint allahu akbar allahu akbar you will not find a person on the face of this earth with the same fingerprint as you you will die with this fingerprint you will be resurrected with this fingerprint and inshallah you will be in jannah with the same fingerprint who is the one who gave this identity? It was the king of all kings, Allah Azza wa Jalla, the mighty. And then you go a step further. Then you realize something. When Umar radiallahu an was about to accept Islam, when the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa raised his hand and he said, Oh Allah, honor Islam with Umar bin Khattab radiallahu an. All of a sudden, one of his companions was nearby and he says, Oh messenger of Allah, you're making a dua for Umar bin Khattab. His dad's donkey is most likely to become Muslim, but not Umar radiallahu an. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Between the fingers of Ar Rahman is the hearts of the believers. Allah is the controller of the affairs. For that very reason, this story comes to mind. It was another Saturday, and all of a sudden at the da'wah stall, a non Muslim comes to me. He says, that Tell me about your religion. I told him about Allah. I told him about the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I told him about Islam. I told him about Iman. And all of a sudden, he stops me there and he says, why is it that when I go on social media, I see all these people giving testimonies that we have become Muslim because we had a dream and in our dream we saw this sign. Why is it that we go on Facebook, on Twitter or we go onto any of these social media sites, people have witnessed something. And then they became Muslim. He says, the day I become Muslim is the day that I see a sign. And that day, when I, when I see the sign, I will definitely accept Islam. I said to him, that look at the night and the day. The night has never outslipped the day. The day has never outslipped the night. Isn't this a sign for you? I said to him, that you look in the ocean, there's a layer of salty water and sweet water. It does not mix. Isn't this a sign for you? Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. He says to me, no, you know what? I'm going to definitely accept Islam the day I see a sign. And I said, Oh Allah, give him a sign that he will never ever forget. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Then I understood. I tried my best, Allahu Akbar, to make him to make him a Muslim. Then I understood that Allah Azza wa Jalla says in the Quran, Oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you cannot guide whom you love. Allahu Akbar. Allah is the one who guides and Allah is the one who misguides. Oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you are just a conveyor. For that very reason, I left him to a side. He comes back the following week. He comes to me. He takes his backpack off. He takes a bag out. In the bag, there's an orange. And he says, you know what? The following, the following day, that when you told me about uh, God give me a sign, you know what? I think I found a sign. He takes the backpack out. He takes a plastic bag out. In the plastic bag, there's an orange that is sliced in half. He takes and he says, you know what? Tell me what to say. What does this say on it? Allahu Akbar. On one side of the orange, it says the name of Allah. On the other side of the orange, it says the name of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I told him that you were looking for a sign. You were looking for a sign. You were looking for a sign. This is your sign. Tears are flowing and flowing on his lips. Says, I testify. There's no God with your worship except Allah. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the messenger of Allah. Who is the one who guided him from the depths of ignorance to the light of Islam? It was Allah Azza wa Jalla, the mighty. This is the king of all kings, the master of the day of judgment, the one, the only Allah Azza wa Jalla, the mighty. Why? Because he is the accountant. He is the mighty. He is the generous. He is the watchful. He is the responder. 
He is the comprehending one. He is the loving one. He is the wise one. He is the majestic one. He is the resurrector. He is the witness. He is the truth. He is the trustee. He is the powerful. He is the forceful. He is the praised. He is the appraiser. He is the originator. He is the restorer. This is Allah Azza wa Jalla, the mighty. The Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. If this is the case, then Thomas Edison, why is he praised? Because he invented the electric light bulb. Why is Tim Berners-Lee praised? Why? Because he invented the HTTP protocol for the internet. Steve Jobs, why is he praised? Benjamin Franklin, why is he praised? When the king of the world, master of the universe, Allah Azza wa Jalla is the best of creators, is the best of makers, is the best of shapers. My brothers, you don't need to go far. You look in that mirror and you realize that the one who created you is the king of the world, master of the universe, Allah Azza wa Jalla, the mighty. Then you just look at the human eye the Allah the Almighty gave you. So powerful is this eye that it consists of 576 megapixels. It will make your Androids and your iPhones crash. It consists of 2 million working parts. It can detect between 25 different color images and it could differentiate between 500 shades of gray. Who's the creator now? Who's the maker now? Who's the shaper now? Allah is the maker. Allah is the shaper. Allah is the creator. Then you go a step further. You look at the heart that Allah Azza wa Jalla gave you. It beats 72 times a minute, 100,000 times a day, 3,600,000 times a year. It pumps 2,000 gallons of blood through 60,000 miles of blood vessels a day. Who is the one who makes his heartbeat without a battery pack, without any supply of power? Allah Allahu Akbar. And according to researchers, they say, so powerful is his heart that he could pull a truck for 20 miles. Who is the creator now? Who is the maker now? Who is the shaper now? Allah is the creator. Allah is the maker. Allah is the shaper. Then you go a step further. Then you realize that Allah Azza wa Jalla gave you a brain. So powerful is his brain. According to researchers, they say he has 60, 70,000 miles of blood vessels in the brain. Allahu Akbar, could you imagine 70, 70,000 miles of blood vessels in your brain? Who is the one who created that brain that could store thousands and thousands of gigabytes of terabytes of memory? Allah is the one who gave you that brain. So powerful is his brain that according to researchers, they say they could light a bulb up and they did a test. And Allahu Akbar, it definitely lit a bulb up. Who's the creator now? Who's the maker now? Who's the shaper now? Allah is the creator. Allah is the maker. Allah is the shaper. Then why is it? Thomas Edison is praised. Benjamin Franklin is praised. Kim Kardashian and Nicki Minaj is praised. Stormzy and Floyd Mayweather are praised. But why is it that we're not praising Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam? That very man that praised Allah Azza wa Jalla from the day he was born till the day he passed away. And those who do not know the status of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, just one narration comes to mind. Ponder over this before the day of judgment takes place. Allah Azza wa Jalla will say to Israfil al Islam to blow through the horn. This angel is such that his eyes are fixed on the throne of the Creator. He does not blink. Why? Fearing that he missed the command of Allah. And when he blows, he will give you such a blow that every single thing in the universe will come to an end. The K2, the Himalayas, the Everest, every single thing will come to an end. And then Allah Azza wa Jalla will cause death to Israfil, Mikael, Jibreel, and all the angels that are carrying his throne. And every single thing will come to an end. Allah himself will remain. And Allah Azza wa Jalla will roll up all the heavens in his hands. He will roll up all the worlds in his hands. And he will say, the I am the Almighty Allah. I am the Almighty Allah. I am the Almighty Allah. For whom is the divine rule today? For whom is the power today? For whom is the kingdom today? I'm the King of all kings, the master of the day of judgment, the one, the only Allah Azza wa Jalla, the mighty. And then Allah Azza wa Jalla will recreate everything. And he will say to Israfil al Islam to blow through the horn. He will blow. The souls will come out like the swarm of bees. They will enter the bodies. Every single person from the beginning of time till the end of time will be resurrected. Some will be sweating up to the ankles. Some will be sweating up to the knees. Some will be sweating up to their waist. Some will be sweating up to their collarbone. Some will be drowned in their own sweat. They'll be screaming. 
There'll be shouting, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. There'll be no hope, Allahu Akbar. Some people will be raised behind Pharaoh. Some will be behind Karun. Some will be behind Hamman. Then they will think, they, they will need someone to intercede for them. They will go to Adam al Islam. Adam al Islam will say that today is the day. Allah is angry like never before. I do not know what will happen to me. Go towards Nuh al Islam. They will go towards Nuh al Islam and they will say to Nuh al Islam, intercede for us, intercede for us, intercede for us. Nuh Islam will say that today is the day Allah Azza wa Jalla the mighty is angry like never before. I do not know what will happen to me. Go towards Ibrahim al Islam. They will go towards Ibrahim. Ibrahim al Islam will say that today is the day Allah is angry like never before. I do not know what will happen to me. Go towards Musa al Islam. They will say to Musa al Islam, intercede for us, intercede for us. Musa al Islam will say that today is the day Allah is angry like never before. I do not know what will happen to me. Go towards Isa al Islam. They will say to Isa. Isa al-Islam, intercede for us, intercede for us, intercede for us. Isa al-Islam will say, today is the day Allah is angry like never before. I do not know what will happen to me. Go towards Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They will go, they will turn, they will ask for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for intercession and his intercession will be accepted for you and I. This is the man who praised Allah. If we want to follow an example, then why ain't the Muslims of the 21st century following the example of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the best of creation? This is the king of all kings and then you go a step further you realize you could leave your house as a believer and you will return as a disbeliever or you could go from your house as a disbeliever and you could return as a believer for that very reason this story comes to mind another woman she was on the dawah stall she comes to me and she says to me that I want to speak to you tell me about your religion uh, tell me something great about Allah the Almighty and tell me something great about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There were people who were waiting there on the side. I said to her, there's people before you. Let me speak to them. Then when I finish with them, I will come back to you. For an hour and a half she waited. Two to three people accepted Islam. And then I went back to her. I go, what do you want to know? She goes to me, I want to know about Allah. I said, you've been waiting for an hour and a half. Then I thought to myself, that look, you got books on the table. You got Quran on the table. You got my CDs here. You can listen to them. She says, no, I want you to tell me something about greatness, about the greatness of Allah. And the only one, the more powerful words came to mind. That Allah will roll up all the heavens in His hands. He will roll up all the worlds in His hands. And He will say that I am the Almighty Allah. For whom is the divine rule today? For whom is the power today? For whom is the kingdom today? I'm the king of all kings. Where are your dictators? Where are your oppressors? No one will answer. Allah Himself will answer. Allah will say that I am the king of all kings. The one, the only, the mighty. Allah who Akbar, she says to me, okay, that tell me about something greatness about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I said Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's the blessed one, he's the noble one, he's the chosen one, he's the seal of prophets, imam of all the prophets. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he stood on a mountain, he pointed towards the moon, indicating with his finger, he took the moon into half. He took one side of the moon on one side of the mountain, the other side of the moon on the other side of the mountain. She says to me, I've heard enough. She's covered from head to toe. She says to me, that I'm ready to accept Islam. Confused by this, I go, ain't you a Muslim? She goes, no, before I met you, before I come to this call, I had a dream. A man come to, my, come to me in a dream. He was dressed in white and he said to me, there'll be a man whose name is Muhammad Abdul Jabbar. He will be at this time, at this place, in this attire, at this area. Go to him and take your shahada under this man. He told me that, you know what? Make sure you wear these clothing and make sure you take a ghusl. This is why I come today and I want to become a Muslim. Our tears are flowing and flowing on ellipses. I testify there's no God worthy of worship except Allah. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is the messenger of Allah. He is the giver of life. He is the taker of life. He is the ever living. He is the self existing. He is the finder. He is the glorious one. He is the majestic. He is the powerful one. He is the creator of power. He is the expedator. He is the delayer. He is the first. He is the last. He is the one. He is the manifest one. He is the hidden one. He is the protecting one. He is the guide to repentance. 
This is Allah Azza wa Jalla, the mighty. And then you go a step further. You realize one thing that this Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam are so fortunate. The Lord, the Almighty gave us a book, not just a normal book. And that's the Quran. Look how Allah, the Almighty preserved it. You look at the people from the time of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam right to the present day. People have come and people have gone. How many people have memorized the Quran? Allah is the one who instilled and made the people memorize this Quran. Kids the age of six, seven, eight, nine, ten have memorized the Quran cover to cover, page for page, word for word. Who is the one who implemented the Quran in the hearts of Pakistanis, in the hearts of Bengalis, in the hearts of Americans, in the hearts of Trinidadians, in the hearts of Jordanians, in the hearts of Tunisians? Allah is the one who's implemented the Quran in the hearts. Why? Because Allah says, We have revealed it and we will look after it. And I swear by Allah, Azza wa Jalla the Mighty, if the whole world got together, and try to burn down every single Quran that exists on the face of this earth, you will see that the Quran will be rewritten. It will be rewritten. Why? Because Allah has instilled it in the hearts of the believers and there will be someone in from the millions and millions of Muslims from around the world who have memorized the Quran and the Quran will be rewritten and will be produced. Why? Because Allah says, we have revealed it and we will look after it. This is the Almighty Allah. Why? Because when we go a step further and then you realize the creation of man and then the creation of Allah, people go around and they start boasting. They think they're bad. They have some new design away or they have the latest phone or the latest watch. And all of a sudden, the guys got pride. Listen to me carefully. Realize this. When you look in the heavens and the earth, you look at the narrations regarding Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He says that regarding this angel Jibreel, he has 600 wings. So powerful is this angel. They took a city so close to the lowest heaven and then so close that according to narration, it says that the angels heard the dogs barking, the chickens croaking. They overturned the city and he slammed it back onto the earth. Who is the one who created this angel? Allah is the one. When you realize this, you will realize you are nothing. When you realize the hadith of Tamim Udari, the Malak al Maut is so powerful and it's so scary that Allah, who according to Imam Qurtubi, he says, so scary is this angel that all the angels in the heaven fear the angel of death. More than one of you fears a lion, fears a beast. His feet is on the ground. His head is in the heaven. Twelve eyes, black of face, fire leaping out from his mouth, coming out from his mouth with 500 angels behind him. Then when you realize this, you realize you are nothing. Then you go a step further. You look at the houses. Allah Azza wa Jalla, the mighty, has made for the believers bricks out of gold and silver and the mixture to hold these bricks together is made out of rubies and pearls. Who is the one who created this? Allah Azza wa Jalla, the mighty. And then you realize the angels who are carrying Allah's throne, the distance between the earlobe and the neck is 70,000 years. When you realize this, you will realize you are nothing. You will realize that your pride will go out of the window. This is the Almighty Allah, the King of all kings, the master of the day of judgment, the one, the only Allah Azza wa Jalla, the mighty. Why? Because He is the avenger. He is the clement. He is the owner. He is the Lord of majesty and bounty. He is the gatherer. He is the rich. He is the enricher. He is the powerful one. He is the one who guides. He is the light. He is the righteous. And he is the one is the most patient. This is Allah Azza wa Jalla, the mighty. And then you go a step further. Allahu Akbar. You realize the man commits sin by night and day. We were nothing. And Allah the Almighty guided us. We were hungry. Allah Azza wa Jalla fed us. We were unclothed. And Allah the Almighty clothed us. Then you realize that we commit sin by night and day. Allah could have made it that we could have been who were from the previous nation disgraced. Why? Because every time that they committed a sin, the next morning they used to wake up, the sin used to be written on their door and every single person used to recognize that this person committed this sin. We are the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We were honored by the King of all kings. The Lord the Almighty will conceal our sins 
and he who makes Tawbah, Allah the Almighty will forgive their sin. For that reason, this story comes to mind. A woman comes to me, she says to me, do you know what? I'm a woman who committed a sin that I do not know that Allah will forgive me. Give me a bit of hope. She says, I'm a woman who used to urinate on the Quran. I used to put my menstruational blood on the Quran. I used to burn a Quran. I used to put my feces on the Quran. Why? So the jinns give me allegiance. The day the jinns gave me allegiance, I destroyed people's households. I destroyed husband and wife's relationship. I destroyed people's lives. I used to make quick money from me. And all of a sudden, one day I heard your lecture on the day of reckoning on YouTube. And this from that day, I stopped what I was doing. I give me hope and tell me there is hope for me. I said to her that the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, anybody who deals with magic is out of the fold of Islam. To come back in the fold of Islam is to testify there is no God worthy of worship except Allah. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the messenger of Allah. Day after, if you committed sins, then number the sand in the desert. You return to Allah. You ask Allah for forgiveness. Allah will forgive your sin. If you committed sin, then number the froth on the ocean. You return to Allah. You ask Allah for forgiveness. Forgiveness, Allah will forgive your sin. If you committed sin that reached the peaks of some mountains, you return to Allah. You ask Allah for forgiveness, Allah will forgive your sins. Why? Because it's the sunnah of Allah Azza wa Jalla, the mighty. Those who sin and those who return to Allah with sincere repentance and with remorse, Allah Azza wa Jalla will forgive their sin. He will forgive their sin. He will forgive their sin. This is the king of all kings, the master of the day of judgment, the one, the only Allah Azza wa Jalla, the mighty. And this is why I conclude by saying that why is it that storms Skepta, Justin Bieber, Kim Kardashian, Nicki Minaj, they are praised. Isn't Allah Azza wa Jalla enough for you? Isn't Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam enough for you? Isn't Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Ali enough for you? Isn't Khalid bin Walid, Salahuddin, Nuruddin enough for you? My brothers, you never know when your end is near. Every single person is guilty in this day and age that they do not praise the king of the world, master of the universe, Allah Azza wa Jalla, the mighty, the way he should be praised. How are we going to praise Allah? The ultimate way is that you stand in front of Allah Azza wa Jalla, the mighty, five times a day. Bowing, standing, praising Allah, because above in the center of the world is the Kaaba. Above the Kaaba, 500 years is the first heaven. In the first heaven, there is a house. And in the house, there's angels that are praising Allah. There are angels who are doing tawaf around the house. Some are in Ruku, some are in Sajood, some are in Qiyam, and they'll remain like the right till the day of judgment. My brothers, you just never know. Today, you are healthy. Tomorrow, you could be bedridden. Why? Because there was a person, Wallahi, his wife used to say that, guide him. Tell me about religion that I could explain to him and make him a better husband. He lives a life of sin. He lives a life of disobedience. And all of a sudden, weeks passed, months passed, even years passed. I used to warn him. Change. You never know when your end is near. Imagine Allah Azza wa Jalla. He takes your eyes away from you. He takes your ability away from you. He says, one day I'll change. Then after four years of me contacting him, speaking to him, I said to him, do you know what? This is my final visit. You want to believe? Then believe. 
You don't want to believe, then don't believe. And I walked out. But before I walked out and I said, that wallahi, you have no excuses now. A warner has come. And Allah sent me to tell you to change. Four years have passed. Few weeks later, I get a call from his family. They go, that he has a problem. You need to come down. I went to the hospital. There he was, weighing five stones with a brain hemorrhage, paralyzed head to toe, and the only thing he could move is his eyes. And I said to him, Do you remember? every single meeting we had I used to remind you of this that could you imagine that Allah Azza wa Jalla takes your abilities away from you tears flow from his eyes but he cannot speak and he cannot move right till this present day two and a half years have passed and he's in the hospital in the same state we pray to Allah that Allah the Almighty cures him. But this could happen to any one of us. Today, we are fit to work, to walk, and to talk. We could praise Allah. But could you just imagine you wake up the next morning? You feel a bit ill. You go to the doctors. Doctors refer you to the hospital and all of a sudden the hospital says that you've got cancer and you've only got one month to live. I swear by Allah there are people out there who just wish they had your lifestyle that they could walk they could speak they could worship Allah and some living in the poor countries what runs through their mind is if only we had a life like yours before Allah Azza wa Jalla takes every single thing away from you return to the king of the world master of the universe Allah Azza wa Jalla the mighty justice will not be done by praising Allah by people like us. Wa akhiru da'wana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.